This is Daniela Norris on All Books Presents, podcast and interview series. We publish great books on the mind-body-spirit connection. And today, my guest is Diana Richardson, author of eight books on the spiritual side of sex. What a fascinating topic. Good morning, Diana. Hey, good morning, Daniela. Nice to hear your voice. Nice to talk to you. Tell us a little about your own personal journey and what brought you to write your books. Well, when in my early 30s, um, I came across some very interesting information about alternative ways to make love. And so for many years, I practiced and explored myself. And this kind of quite organically led to uh, teaching people and then writing books. So it really started, you know, with my own exploration and understandings. And yeah, things changed. Things shifted a lot when I started to become more aware of the spiritual aspect of sex. So that's what I've been spending the last 25 years involved in, you know, writing books as well as teaching uh, couples in, in workshops and so on. Sounds fascinating. Can you read us a few paragraphs from one of your books? Because I'm sure many of our listeners are wondering, and so am I. Well, I just have this one book here, um, Tantric Love Feeling Versus Emotion. Um, the real truth about love is that love is not accidental or lying out of our hands beyond reach. Love can be kept alive by separating love from emotion. When we take conscious effort to recognize our own emotions and take responsibility for them, we can easily rise above their destructive potential. We need to develop an awareness of the very moment we experience a reality shift, where we suddenly contract, close down, and feel disconnected. Usually any emotional reaction we experience will be as a result of something your partner or another person says or does. For some of us, even the tone of voice of another person can be enough to trigger old childhood memories and emotions. Tantric love, feeling versus emotion. So what is the difference between the two? Well, in the English language and actually in most languages, uh, they kind of words that we use interchangeably. Um, but really, when you go into it, to feel an emotion is very different to feeling a feeling. And, you know, basically in our society, we are not encouraged to allow our feelings. We tend to repress them. And this then forms like a body of unexpressed feelings. And so our body of unexpressed feelings is our emotions. So really, the thing is, when we don't allow it, to feel our feelings or share our feelings in the present, then they kind of twist and turn and become emotions. And emotions have very, very distinctive um, indicators. You know, for instance, the first thing you'll feel is a disconnection from the person that you, you're talking to. You'll also feel you know, if it's somebody who's a friend or a, a, a beloved, you won't be able to look them in the eyes. The tendency will be to blame them for this moment of unhappiness. Um, emotions tend to be very mind-oriented. And also emotions love to argue and discuss. Um, emotions are very self-righteous. They try to change the other person. So if we become aware of the kind of what we call indicators of emotion or symptoms of emotion, then that helps us to recognize what's going on. Because the emotions are a source of a lot of arguments and stress in a relationship. But what we don't realize is that a lot of what we are experiencing is really not to do with the present, but to do with um, unexpressed things from the past, you know, often really going back to childhood. So it's not that emotions are wrong. You know, there's reasons why we have feelings that we haven't expressed. Um, it's more if we don't recognize that this is what's going on, 
then it's very easy to lose the thread of love. And also so many couples have said to me over the years, you know, with my last partner, I had one fight too many because there is a level of toxicity and that comes with um, when we're in this, what I call the emotional state. So through recognizing the difference or understanding when you are an emotion, it means you can protect your love and take the emotion away from the immediate situation and continue arguing and discussing and so on. It's extremely, extremely helpful information. So do we carry emotions from one relationship to another? Um, yes, we do. We do. So if you have some kind of injury or hurt from a previous relationship and it was not um, allowed space, the feelings and so on, they are stored. But really a lot of our emotions go even earlier back, you know, to the first five years of life or to our first sexual experiences. And obviously there's a lot of, sadly, um, a tre tremendous amount of uh, crossing of boundaries and so on, and these leave sexual boundaries, and this leaves imprinting and, and, and unexpressed feelings. Um, but interestingly is that often these kind of emotional statements that one makes, like you always do this, you never do that, um, these will stay the same even if you change your partner. So that is an indicator that it really is something much, much deeper, you know. So the pattern continues even the, if the partner changes. I recognize what you're saying, and, and that's very interesting. So maybe you can help um, those of us who are listening and, and have experienced uh, this crossover of, of emotions from one relationship to another. So in, in brief, what can we do when this happens? Well, the first thing is to just recognize, you know, and that takes a little while because, um, you know, when we in emotion, we're very identified with it. We think this is me. So in on one level, it's quite an ego state. So it's quite hard for the ego to say, oh, my God, I am emotional now. So the first thing is to make the statement, I'm emotional now, that you know where you are, your partner knows that you know where you are. And then we really suggest that, you know, you say to your partner, I need some time for myself. I'm coming back. And then you go and do something um, with your body um, to release that um, old vibration of the emotion. Because when emotions get activated, they do run through the body. Um, so the easiest, simplest way is just to go for a good jog or shake or hit a pillow or, you know, something even, you know, vacuuming or, but something very physical just to get you out or to burn up um, those toxins in a way. And then you'll feel how different, you know, like you suddenly come down to earth again and you return to your partner and you'll see, ah, oh, that, that wall has gone. Um, so that is, you know, the most basic way. Um, of course, there are other ways, like just simply to feel into that, you know, that tension that you feel in your body that usually we, you will feel in the solar plexus. And just to allow it up through the heart. And, you know, to, if there's tears or real feelings, to move into those. Because that, of course, then you're really healing yourself on a deeper level because you gaining access to very, very old wounds or injuries or unexpressed feelings. I'm going to try that. That sounds wonderful. And I'll probably be vacuuming a lot then. <laughs> My house will be very clean. Yeah, there's always benefits with this. But really, you know, I have been teaching couples for over 25 years and I teach them very concretely about how to make love in a more conscious way. And Parallel to that, I teach this information about emotions and feelings. And the feedback that I get is tremendous. How much both these bodies of materials support the couple to sustain the love. Of course, I've experimented with myself before I teach other people, and I know it works. But 
yeah, I get again and again, wow, that really helped us because what happens is we begin to doubt our capacity to sustain love. You know, there's always these ups and downs and, you know, little crises. But if we have this slightly, you know, more objective view of what's actually happening, um, then, you know, we can we can hold the love space, take the emotions away and um, deal with them individually and then come back to the partnership. And it, it really, really works well. Sounds amazing. This is from your book, Tantric Love feeling versus emotion that's um, right you've written another book called tantric love letters another great title what are tantric love letters yes well you know over the years um i've had thousands of email communications with people who've participated in my groups with many 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 from people that i've had no contact with at all aside from that they have read my books and what I did observe over the years is that everybody is asking similar questions. So instead of me writing every time an individual answer, um, I decided to make a collation of, of basic questions, basic situations. And um, then you can just, you know, have this book as a resource just to answer, uh, you know, different things that happen in your life. Um, and people who read that, some people even start with that book and that leads them leads them to other books. What I do want to do go back to is this tantric love feeling versus emotion because, for instance, with O books, I have the heart of tantric sex, um, which has been in print for like 15 years now with O books. And this has turned out, you know, very gratifyingly to be a bestseller. Gratifying because... People are so um, happy to hear alternative information about sex to the conventional. And, and why I'm mentioning this is because in that book also I talk about emotions and feelings and the importance of it. Um, but because not everybody is interested in exploring alternatives in lovemaking or wanting to change the way that they make love, um, I decided to make a separate book out of the sexual context because we have emotions within families, with colleagues, with friends. So it has quite a broad application. So that's why I took that theme and made this, you know, special book, amplified it a little bit. Um, you know, tantric love, feeling versus emotions. The subtitle of that book, which is nice, is Golden Rules to Make Love Easy. <laughs> and as yeah. you say, as you say, um Feelings versus emotions, they're true with our partners, they're true with our friends, even with our family members. And uh, just what you shared earlier about what to do when you feel this kind of emotion is already um, enlightening. I think it's, it's fantastic, but I would like to ask you um, more about your best-selling book. I think it sold 65,000 copies, um, The Heart of Tantric Sex. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about it for those who haven't read it yet? Yes, you know, it's really about how to be more conscious in lovemaking because we are we have no sex education really, um, aside from biology in school. Um, plus, we're imprinted with a certain style of sex that informs us that sex is about getting hot and intense, you know, heat and intensity and excitement and sensation. Um, because we believe that the climax is the reason to have sex, but really the climax is just an option. And there is another style where, which is much more relaxed and more an unfolding and with, with no climax as a goal. Of course, you can have one, um, but you really can prolong the whole thing. So the Heart of Tantric Sex gives a whole bunch of love keys, what I call the love keys, and, um, you know, different things about how to use the eyes, how to use communication, about breath, about positions, um, but the fact that actually, you know, it's possible to make love without an erection, 
because that's one of the difficulties in our society is that if there's no erection, then there's no sex, but it's also possible to um, introduce the penis in a relaxed state. Um, so it just opens up the spectrum. And the thing about when we're more conscious in sex, um, that this awareness really does generate love. It's just one of those alchemical magical things so it's so helpful for a relationship for a couple to jump off or to explore you know jump off the usual train that we run and to explore um something else <laughs> it it kind of opens up complete new life window and uh, it's interesting you feel better um, you feel more connected with your partner. So there's a lot of advantages to it. And obviously a great need because uh, a lot of people found it very, very useful. Um, is there anything else you can share today with our listeners? Um, for those who are not familiar with your writing, for those who are curious but are maybe a bit reluctant or embarrassed to read about sex and to ask questions about sex? <laughs> well, that's quite a big ask. <laughs> because there's a lot to say. But I think the main thing is to realize that with our bodies in general in our lives, we're quite mechanical. And then this, you, we go into sex and we're pretty mechanical. So it's starting to be more aware of what you do and how you do it. So even walking, cooking, driving, sitting at the computer, if you align your body, soften the body, you know, relax jaw, shoulders, belly, the whole pelvic floor area. Um, these things help you to become more present because that is what we have lost really, is a quality of presence in the body. And that translates very much into sex, that we tend to be, like I said, a mechanical. And because we have this idea that the climax is the reason to have sex, we tend to be a little bit ahead of ourselves. So there's a, a basic loss of, of presence. So this is the main key, um, is how to be more here and now. And if you practice outside of bed, it makes it easier to um, practice in bed. Um, look, reading does help because a lot to, is to do with changing our minds because our, our bodies and sex is dominated by the mind. We've lost the, the naturalness. Um, so, yeah, like I say, reading is helpful just to start to change the mind. But very definitely, when you start to introduce this quality of awareness and presence, then everything just comes more meaningful and... Uh, yeah, more out of the moment, more spontaneous, not so much always running along the same track, as it were, because that's what we tend to do. You know, if you look at our sex lives, from the moment we start to the moment we finish, I mean, over your lifespan, we always pretty much doing the same thing. Or if it's not happening, we're regretting that we don't have that old style, you know, or how it was in our 20s. Um, we do accept, we have no choice, that yes, we do get older, but what we don't accept is that our sex lives also change. Um, but then people are kind of grasping, trying to keep up with how it has been, instead of introducing new tools and keys to, to cooperate, you know, with our body energy and changing situations. So awareness and mindfulness in love, in sex and in life, Right, right, yes. And so we've mentioned um, three of your books today, uh, Tantric Love, Feeling versus Emotion. We've talked about tantric love letters and, of course, your um, best-selling book, uh, The Heart of Tantric Sex. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's been lovely, Daniela, and uh, let's do it again. <laughs> uh, if people want to find more about your work um, and your talks, um, your books, can you please let them know where they can connect with you? Um, yes, my website is www.livinglove.com. 
and there it you know mentions my retreats and also all the books I've written and also there there's a link to a TEDx talk that I gave earlier this year that is like a 17 minute synthesis of 25 30 years of of um, research and with teaching and so on um so that is actually quite helpful as a as a starting point if you just want to get a quick download very practical and um yeah so that's people can use that information too thank you so much diana it was wonderful speaking with you thank you too daniela have a good day this is daniela norris with all books presents podcast and interview series all books publishes great mind body spirit books my guest today was diana richardson author of eight books on the topic of spiritual mindful sex you can find her books at your favorite bookshop or order them online and connect with diana and learn more about her work through her website www.livinglove.com you can also learn more about the books we publish on our website www johnhuntpublishing.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>